Justin. Thank you for stopping by our booth. Thank you, Elaine. Welcome back to GTC this year. Thank you for joining us. You've got a bunch of amazing hardware here, and thank you so much for your support over the past year as we, you know, rolled out the Over Nano Super and all this great robotics stuff. Yeah, this year is much, much busier than last year, and this GTC, we're still bringing up our Jetson Orange device family, and so this device is, is for Edge AI, Vision AI, and also we have a couple of new devices, it's mainly for robotics applications. So this year we have this new box. Uh, before, we have our Ray computer, G4D12, it's always our best seller, but in this year we have upgraded that into Orange Nano and Orange NX Super. So for our NX, now you can get up to 157 pounds and with 40 watt power consumption. Yeah, so we upgraded the interfaces with Google Ethernet and also upgraded the hybrid cooling system. So we will release that in April and you can upgrade to our Nano and our NX Super. Yeah, so um, that's the anything interesting you found for the GDC. I've always been a fan of like your recomputer systems because they offer uh, like relatively rugged IP rated enclosure, but still like affordable. And I tell people all the time, like the Oren NX, we don't have a dev kit for, but like the seed system is the most affordable variant of that. And thanks for doing the upgrade for the Super Nano and all these other little systems that, that you put out. It makes a big difference when folks like I go to actually use this stuff and they can just, you know, buy it off the shelf. In addition to all the cool robot kits and, and stuff that, that you've made. Yeah. Thank you. AI robotics and embodied AI is a very hot topic. I've seen uh, some several sessions introduced about the human world robot and embodied AI and how we get started. So what do you find special in this GTC? Yes, well, obviously robot learning, embodied AI, physical AI is continues to uh, increase and mature. Now we have the likes of Cosmos, um, world foundation model to help us tune and train and generate more training data and eval data for those. Our partnership, our joint partnership with like Hugging Face Lay Robot to continue to roll this out to all types of developers and uh, refine those robot learning workflows in addition to all the other like home AI agent integration that you do with like your other devices too. But just in general, like the whole community has been moving to uh, keep these models coming out. For example, like the OpenPy, we released a group VLA, group yeah. N1 here, and just the, the more the merrier and um, getting more VLAs, VLMs in the hands of people to go off, start experimenting with them. Just last week, Gemma 3 came out. The, in my opinion, the VLM capabilities in that are a lot uh, higher for like real world edge use cases like we found things like I don't know like traffic light detectors or other other like robotics things mm -hmm. and uh, it seems to be going really really well in there in addition to all the actual like humanoid companies and robotics companies that are uh, getting ready to like deploy this on the community side we're making equal progress uh, uh, making it accessible and easy for all to use yeah in the community we're making the equal process uh, step follow up with the research. Uh, I think the embodied AI, the, uh, there is a couple of sessions also pointed out right now. It, there is still in a research stage, but it's very fast accelerated. Uh, so I see it. So we are now, we are also bringing up this uh, 3D printing arm and that can train and deploy uh, division policy and ACT and the Pi Zero model and from Hugging Face, the whole framework. Yeah, so now this is currently the most cost-effective robot arm uh, that you can build the embodied AI from the scratch. Yeah, so I said we're committed to the making technology accessible to everyone. So, so everyone now, now, can, now can utilize this hardware and also the software and community libraries to ex experience the advanced robotics. Yeah, I think it's only been in like the past year so that even myself, the um, six degree of freedom manipulators right. and stuff have become even usable for us. So it, it is a great increase in, in making that. And I encourage all of you to get involved, get your kids involved, 
uh, it's a big part of education uh, going forward. Not only 3D printing robot arm, we also have this bipedal robot that is powered by RNX and RN Nano. And so this uh, old robot is open source and SDK is also open source. We make that is more friendly to to developers and can build them their own to deploy the reinforcement learning. Yeah. yeah, you you were saying this is using live reinforcement learning yeah. on the O and X, yeah. right? Okay, that's great. And this is the same exact technology that you will see in like the humanoids, along with the VLAs. Like just here we released Groot VLA, along with like Lay Robot integration, and uh, it, it is all going like really well, one one step at a time. And I love these like little droid like designs. They're very friendly. Everybody gets along with them, much like like the Disney. Yeah. BDX and such, and this is very accessible and uh, easy for anybody to go out and 3D print and uh, assemble and actually get started on the exact same technology, same processors, same LLMs and VLAs that, that uh, just get scaled up to, to the full humanoid stage. The only difference is the humanoids are, you know, 30, 40 degrees of freedom where these are uh, less and require less compute less data and training, and even the likes of ourselves can get on uh, the uh, platforms like these. Yeah, I think with this accessible hardware and, and also including the Jackson Orange, so developers right now can also leverage Root. Yeah, and also you have a new release uh, N1 model. Yeah, the, the Groot N1 yeah. VLA, which is a smaller, faster VLA that we've optimized with TensorRT. And th these are all great along with like OpenPy, OpenVLA, all of those together in the pipeline. You can just like switch out, see which one works the best uh, for you. And in addition to Cosmos, that's starting to become uh, more of a, of a play in this to generate all of the training and evaluation data for those. So our big thing next is really the uh, real to sim evaluation so that you don't have to just like physically test these yeah. every single time. It just needs all done in sim so that you can just tell uh, if it's working well or not because there's so many parameters to tweak and things like that um, that you can just like spin up the simulator like you got running yeah. there and uh, uh, then find out what works and uh, what works best. Yeah, talking about the real to sim or sim to real, and it's important to leverage ASIC sim, right? Because now the data sets is the the most tricky things. <laughs> yes, ab yes, absolutely. And it was actually kind of by virtue of digging into Lay Robot project that uh, I found that real to sim is actually quite important. It, it was previously that like sim to real was what yeah. we were all about, and uh, folks like. Uh, over at the Agility Digits booth, they are they are actually showing Sim to Real in, in real time on their humanoid. But um, we found that the first step really you need is Real to Sim, so you can evaluate it based yeah. on like the real world training data that you collected and see how it will actually respond in like that simulated environment. And interesting to do that, that is all like digital twin technology. Yeah. 3D Gaussian splatting, reality capture, and it like all comes together in one big pipeline along with Cosmos, which is itself uh, all like VLMs, VLAs, uh, Gaussian splatting, NERFs. It was all that really interesting visual AI technology coming together in like this symbiotic pipeline to, to make it all work. It's really quite interesting how it all yeah, comes together. Yeah. Actually, for all the robotics project we mentioned, like this commercial robot arm, and also the 3D printing arm, SO arm 100, and bar pedal, it can all simulate it in the Isaac scene and also combine the ROS too, and for the motion, motion yeah. control. There, there yeah. are a lot of parts to this. There, there's like ROS, Lay Robot, Isaac, Jetson, uh, probably a bunch of others in there too, that like the open pie. Gemma, so that there's a lot that we've all been coordinating. You see it in the community. We're even starting to use like LLM summarization and other things to uh, use AI to help our developers, uh, you know, manage all the huge influx of models and data to help us develop the AI faster. So that like inception level moment is forming where like AI is, is helping us do uh, a better job and, and keep it all straight. 
Yeah, thank you, Dustin, stopping by our booth. So uh, after GTC and we please stay tuned with us, we will have a lot of tutorials and hackathons about different open source crew projects. Yeah, so stay tuned, we'll see. Thank you, Elaine. It's great as always.